Hey guys, it's Mo May, and I cannot keep up with your requests for folios, but I'm trying. I'm trying real hard. Today, we're doing the six by six as promised. So this folio takes three pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock, and I told you I wanted you to be able to use a full six by six album and cut your six by six paper down to save on waste, and that's what we're gonna do. So to do that, I have to start with this piece. It's kind of our major mechanism, okay? So here's where you're gonna score. I need you to score at two and three fourths, at three, then at nine, and nine and a fourth. Okay, so that's the first set. Two and three fourths, three, nine, nine and a fourth. Now we're gonna turn it into our scoreboard and do our second set. So this one, you're gonna score at two and a half and three, nine and nine and a half. Now here's the thing. What we're trying to do, I'm gonna turn this around because I, I kinda want this to make sense to you from the get-go. What we're doing is we're creating um, gusset or binder spaces. These two are gonna be quarter of an inch. The top and the bottom are half an inch to give us a little extra space when we close this guy up, okay? So that's your first set of scores. On your next two sheets, so easy. We're gonna take one of them and we're gonna score it at six all the way down, just like so. Matter of fact, let's just do them both this way. You'll see why It'll be a little bit different, but it'll save you time if you do it this way. So go ahead and score these guys at six inches, both of your other pieces. All right, now we need our trimmer. Now for these pieces that we scored in the middle at six, let me get this where you can see that score mark. There it is in the middle. I want you to turn that score mark to its side, and then we're gonna cut this in half at six. And I'll show you why. These are gonna be the kind of arms of the folio. So you get two here. And then we need to do the same thing on the other sheet. Now, what's gonna be a little different here is we're gonna use one of these as it is, so I'll show you what I mean. This guy will still be used just like this. You'll end up with three of these little kind of booklet pieces or accordion pieces, that's what they're gonna be. But this one, what I want you to do is I want you to, and we'll do it to save time. You're gonna cut this guy in half real quick, stack these on top of each other, and then cut them down to five by five. I did not want to waste this piece. I wanted to be able to use as much of my three pieces of 12 by 12 as possible. And this is the best way I could find to do it. And you'll see why just when we get to it. But that's what you're going to do here. Now, the other thing I like is, if you know me at all, I like these kinds of pieces to use in my scrap bin. So if I need a banner or a sentiment backer or anything like that, I have these handy. And this is all that's left from your three pieces of 12 by 12. Pretty good, right? There's probably a way to make that even more seamless, but that's just the way I did it and it works out. Okay, now we need to go back to our first sheet and pull out some scissors. Now I wanna make this make sense to you, so I think I'll do some marking here. Let's see, let's use the white pen. So just mark one side so you can see, and I went a little uphill on this one, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut the inside score mark down to our big six by six square. Then you're gonna cut the inside score mark out to the edge. So you can see here, you're taking this bit of the spine off and this bit of the spine off when you cut it. You'll do that on both sides. And the same here, you're gonna take that bit of the spine and this bit of the spine. I'll cut it and let you see what it looks like and then it'll make more sense. I didn't wanna do white all over my uh, blue here because I'm afraid I won't get all of this off, but I thought if I do two sides, it'll make sense for you. So now I think you can see, you've got this piece at the top and the half inch, the half inch here at the bottom plus another piece, and then here you've got two outsides with just a quarter of an inch gusset here. Let's go ahead and score and fold. I find it's easier to go ahead and do that at this point while this is nice and flat. So we're gonna just score and fold on all of those marks, including those quarter of an inch and the half inch pieces. So all your score marks. This paper is so gorgeously thick and rich and I have to really be careful or I will score it out of line because it's just got so much body to it but it is perfect for making these folios with it's so great if you don't know what paper it is it's the Cartabella solids and we just started carrying it in the store and it's just so gorgeous so beautiful um, I don't know if you know this about my videos, but I've had a lot of new viewers lately, and you're asking a lot of questions, and I want to clear this up. 
Anytime I'm using a product on screen, I typically have it in my store for you as well. And you can find our store at maymaymadeit.com or there is always a blog post and, or links below for you to access anything we're talking about in the videos, always. Okay, so before we start assembly, I wanna show you how this works. This is the top, this is the bottom. This guy comes in like this. This guy comes in like this, okay? This guy comes up and then he comes over. Now you see, we're gonna fill all this in in just a second, I'm gonna show you how. But what I want us to do, I want you to notice on the side before we start building, do you see how this doesn't go all the way across? There's a reason. Inside, we're gonna hold an accordion fold. In here, we're gonna hold two accordion folds. So that's why I gave us this little bit of gap of space right here. So you'll see that when we put these guys in. All right, let's go back to those other pieces, our other um, cut in half six by six pieces, get this nice and flat. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and fold and crease this guy down. Now for this first one, I want the bulk of this part of the album to live inside this flap, okay? So we're gonna glue it like a pocket to this flap. And the way I want you to do it is I want you to have the open edge here and your folded edge here, okay? So watch this, open edge, folded edge. We're gonna take our glue and on this flap, we're gonna run a bead here along the side, just a three side pocket, right on this side of the score mark, like so, and then right at the edge, just like that. Then, like I said, open side out, folded here, I want you to glue this down. So you're just gonna glue it to your score mark, not really crossing over, you can lift it up and kinda of get it laid in there good, but you just want it to be to that score mark so you can close it nicely. Good deal, that closes good. So what'd we do? We installed this piece, look how much real estate we've got. We installed this piece and gave ourselves a pocket. That's what we were trying to do there. So make sure this dries really well, okay? And then I'm gonna send this in. Now do you see what I mean by I wanted all of that to live inside of here, okay? I need this one to live outside of here. So let me show you how we're gonna do that one folding and creasing the other piece. So here's how this one's gonna lay out. I've got the fold here, the open edge here, and we're gonna do a three-sided closure here, okay? You can do this laying it like this, doing your glue like this, and that works, but here's how I found it works best for me. If I just kinda treat it the same way as I did the other one by opening it this way, making sure my opening is here to the left and my fold is here, to me, this just makes more sense. I just kind of make it the same process we just did. It's gonna land in a different place, but that's okay, that's what we want it to do. So three sides glue. Also, if you don't care for pockets, just glue this down completely. You don't have, you'll just cover it up whenever you're covering your album. Glue this right to the first score line, not over it. Again, you wanna be able to close it up nice and neat. And now what we've installed here is this, okay? But when we flip this back over, you'll see that we've installed it to the front. So no more, no more weight is added on the inside, it's added to the outside, which is what we want because when we add paper and, and pictures inside here, we'll have room and we'll have the same here. Because remember, this guy has a half an inch gusset. Now you're thinking, what are we doing with him? We're adding that third one, okay? So let's fold and crease it. Now on this one, I decided not to do a pocket. It landed in such a way that it was kind of weird anyway. So this one, I'm just gonna glue completely as my hold on to my next little accordion piece. So I'm just gonna glue all of this. It's actually probably a really good idea here too because this piece is gonna get a lot of opening and closing, right? So it's probably best we don't have a lot of pockets in this particular area. This gets glued to the first score line and lined up side to side. And again, no pocket here, it's all the way. And then this lives like this. See what happens? Now, if you don't like this here, you can glue that to the inside, but it's not, you can always flip this over and glue it on the inside, but it's not gonna show either way because I'm gonna cover this with paper. But if it bothers you to have that little, like right on the edge, you might see it, I don't know, it's not a big deal. But if it does, just make sure you glue this piece, this piece out here and that'll hide on the inside. But again, you'll see, it won't really matter. And now look, 
this is how this guy closes up. Isn't that cute? Look at all that space we've got for pictures. Of course, we'll add a magnet. Let's do that now too. For this folio, I'm gonna use a bigger magnet. These are also basic gray. We carry these in the store for you guys. And what you do, if you've never seen them, is you take a plus and a minus. See how there's a plus and a minus? And these are pre-sticky backed for you. And you wanna pick these guys up together. So I've got plus on one side, minus on the other. And then what I like to do is peel the backer off of one side. Doesn't matter which side goes where, as long as there's each one on either side. And then you just decide where you want it on your cover. Now I've never really talked about magnet place, placement best practices, but one thing I do like to do is I like to leave myself plenty of space here on this side of the magnet so I can glue my paper down good. If you put your magnet too close to the edge, your paper is gonna lay over it and not really be able to be glued down. So move it down. If you have the luxury of about a finger width, that's what I would do, because that's really good to be able to get your paper down. And here you can see we have lots, lots of room, right? So do that, I've installed it there, and now I peel off this back. This is how easy magnets are. Do not let them intimidate you. Seriously, there's nothing to a magnet. Here's a kicker though, do this. Make sure you stand this guy up and you square it up, because once you put your magnet down, that's where it's gonna close, okay? So this way it'll hold it nice and square and close. Also, this folio can go either way. You can open it this way and have it go up, out, <laughs> and over, right? Or you can close it where that is the bottom, where, where it goes like this. You see what I'm saying? You have this at the top and then do like this. Do you see how far off my magnet is? It's not gonna matter. You see it's like up here too high, not really in the middle. You won't see it. The point of it is it'll just hold my book closed. I don't know if, I kinda want this to have a top closure. I'm kinda feeling that. Or do I want it to have a side closure? I don't know, that's gonna be the hardest part. All right, so what you can do now is you can use your six by six or your 12 by 12 to cover this guy and add all of the pretties to it. So now our five by five pieces that we have left over are what goes into our pockets. Let me show you. So if we open this guy up and we discover we have one pocket here, one of these guys will slide in here really well. I tried to do five and a quarter by five and a quarter, but it was just a little too tight for my glue, but this fits perfectly there. And then we do the same here. Oh, I forget it's right here. So we just slide this one in and we have these two really good size photo mats. If I turn this back this way, you can see it. So see that, isn't that cool? And we didn't waste any paper either. Um, only a little bitty bit to go into our scrap bin. All right, let's decorate one. Breaking in here to ask you to hit that red subscribe button. It's free. Also hit the bell button beside it. You can help me reach my big goal this year of 400,000 subscribers. Okay, back to crafting. Now through the magic of YouTube, I did the old switcheroo and I made myself a black one <laughs> because I want to use this Mamarazzi paper. I have not gotten to use it and I'm really excited about it. And uh, I just think it's so pretty. I think it'll be perfect for this. Now my friend Lisa did do one of these. She has a class coming up. If you're interested in any of our classes, check out maymayevents.com. It'll be linked in the description, but I didn't get to use it, so I want to today. So you know the deal. I like to find my front cover first and I'm gonna decide with my front cover if I want my folio to open this way or if I want it to open this way, or I don't know if I want it to open this way. Look, it's kind of a matchbook, right? So let me flip through the book and see what I'm gonna do. I got an idea. I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but that's what you guys like, right? When I try something and we find out together. Now, let me show you something. When you have a piece of cardstock, let me get a solid piece out. I know this is a print, but we're gonna call it a solid because you know me, right? So when you have images like this that are the full page versus images like this that you kind of want to keep centered, let me show you what you want to do. We're going to need to cut our pages down to five and three fourths by five and three fourths so that they'll mat our full size six by six areas, okay? With a page like this, all I have to do is put it in my trimmer, trim off a quarter of an inch on two sides, and it's going to work perfectly in my album because, and let me show you, this is just how we mat cards, how we do anything like that, because when I open this up and I find my first six by six piece I'm gonna mat, this gets centered in this piece and you can see here that I end up with an eighth of an inch all the way around for matting, right? But, and that looks really good, but when I, what I wanna do here 
is I'm gonna split this image on here and see what happens. But in order for me to keep the image in the center and take that same quarter of an inch off, I'm gonna have to doctor every quarter of the page or every side of the page. So here's what that means. Instead of one quarter of an inch from two sides, I have to actually take the eighth of an inch from four sides. Now I wanna show you something. I have not prepped this ruler for this, so I'll show you how I do this. This ruler has a gap where the eighth of an inch is. So what I like to do is mark it myself. So I'm gonna take my Tim Holtz ruler and I'm gonna lay the 1 8 inch mark in the cut line. Can you see that right there? I've got the 1 8 inch in the cut line. Then I'm just gonna lay some tape, yellow tape, any tape you've got that you can see. It could be washi, whatever, right beside it, okay? I'm a little bit crooked on my tape. I can tell it by looking at it. So I'm just gonna lift this up and straighten it out. I know the top is where I want it, so I'm just gonna lift and bring it over. That feels much better. Okay, so that gives me the 1 8 of an inch mark. One thing you do have to pay attention to, if your tape goes over your cut line, you need to clean that out or push it down because that's what holds your paper in place. So now see, and leave that there always. You know what it is, you can see through it, it works perfect. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little guy, line him up to my newly found 1 8 inch mark and trim from all four sides. Now you can see that I've kept that image in the center so I didn't get off of one side versus the other. And now I'll have my little matte edge all the way around my six by six album. Okay, now because I wanna split this to get this image, I need to measure this so I know how far down in my paper to cut. So like I told you, I wanted to cut this in half so I can get this kind of split seam here. So I laid it on here as one piece and then I just took my ruler and lined it up from the edge of the page here to the, to the half line or the cut line so I could see how much I needed to cut and it turned out to be two and a quarter is where I cut it. So that's what this is, two and a quarter and then the rest here. So now when I line this up, I'm gonna glue it down exactly. And what do I mean by exactly? I'm gonna glue it exactly to that edge of the flap and go an eighth of an inch all the way around now my scene will stay together. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it that way. I just wanna see what it looked like. I may add some stuff on top. I'm sure I'll put something somewhere to kind of dress it up. We'll see. And this one's gonna get married right back to there and glued down. I might even be able to slide it under just a tiny bit. I think that looks better, yeah. So there we go, there's the front. And look, now it opens like a scene. I like that. Now I need to cover this in here and I will. That's not gonna be an issue. It'll just be a different paper, which it would even be cool if I had used one whole piece here and then just a piece there. I don't know, afterthought, right? So let's cover this. So I cut these two pieces, two and a quarter by five and three quarters. So this is where you'll see why I think it matters that you leave yourself some room on the side of that magnet so you can glue this into place really good. I'm gonna open this up. I feel like I'm squishing my album when I do that. But this way, see, I can really sandwich that magnet in and get it glued down on the edge really well. It's not lifting up in any way. All right, so we have that all covered and now that lives like that. Isn't that cute? I love that. All right, now here's what I'm gonna do to save time and to keep you from being bored. I'm gonna run through and anywhere there are solid pieces, like this is a solid piece, I'm just gonna mount paper on these, mount cardstock on these and get it all covered and then we'll come right back together. Okay, now when I show you this, you're gonna think that I did too much without showing you, but I'm gonna show you how easy this is to do and why it looks kind of finished. It's not finished, but let me show you. So you open this flap and then we're gonna open this one. So see what we've got inside, look how cute. Now, why does it look almost finished? Because this paper is doing the work. I think this page will be so cute to put some little pictures just like right here, maybe some journaling or something like that. Then, and let me show you this bottom section. Look at this, how cute. Another picture here, some more embellishments here. Look, one, two, three, four, right there. Wouldn't that be cute to just let the paper do the work? A huge place for whatever I wanna put right here then let's keep going, let's just keep going. Look, here, like this is what I meant by it's gonna look like I did a lot of the work, I really didn't. See what I did here? I did exactly what I did on the front cover. I just cut it the same way so I got that full sheet effect. It was so easy to do it like that instead of having to um, map this pocket and then map this section. And then these guys, it's this, they're just matted. But I'm telling you, this paper looks like, you know, she did the whole thing, but I didn't, it's just covered. 
Now, if you look over here, look how cool that is. I love how it looks like um, that camera lens is all one piece. And then when you add the pocket, it kind of hide or add the mat, it kind of hides it until you pull it out. And I want to show you again, I let the paper do the work here on these. It's so incredible. All I have done is matte and look at it. It's so gorgeous. I want you to notice this too. I doubled up on the um, pages. I had to. I didn't have enough pages to do a different one everywhere, but I doubled up on them, and I think it looks beautiful. That's something I learned from um, uh, Janine at 49 and Market. She doubles up on some of her pages, and we've always thought, no, you've got to have a different page every time, but you don't. Let me go back this way. I'm sorry I'm all over the place, but look, isn't that beautiful? A picture here, maybe one that comes from the side all the way over, just get creative, right? Maybe a circle picture would be pretty right there. Do that with a die cut. Then you got a whole page here. Then, I think I showed you that part already. And then you close it up. And I want to show you the back because I really like this too. These are those pages that are all the tiny cut apart. So look how perfect that is for the back. So now all we need to do is use some embellishments to kind of doll this guy up. So to show you what I've done now, I've done some fussy cutting from the same six by six pad. You get two of these and I did one, that's what I've got here. So I think I'm gonna line some of these up on the cover. I kind of in my mind wanted to like have this, like this and maybe have like different cameras stacked kind of hanging over that little edge. It makes me a little nervous because I'm thinking it's gonna get some wear and tear here but I kind of like it. Isn't that cute like that? Like laid out like that? It may not even be this one. I may do something else, but I like it like this. So I'm just considering, I just think I want to do that. I like the way it covers up that edge and you can always open it from this corner. I mean, it'll be all right. So this, I think I'm going to glue down. Just glue in the top half. Cause like I said, that other portion is going to hang off. So just making sure I put glue in the right spot. Now I have all these left. I'm going to run through the album and add these in places. When I'm adding these, I'm only gluing the back corners of them so that photos can stick underneath. So anything that will be where a photo might need to land, I'm just gonna make sure I don't add glue there. Does that make sense? So I'm leaving this open, see how that can slide in so we can slide photos in. I just think this is a cute way to use these little images. So now I think it'll be cute if I add some of these guys. I think these are really cute. And I think some little sayings throughout this book would be precious. I'm not gonna be adding this part because I really don't know how I want that to lay out at this point, but I do know I wanna add some little sentiment. So I've taken these two banner pieces from the Picture Perfect set, and I'm also using these sentiments to fit inside of it. This set, look how old this set is from my stash. This is when I used to call my stamp sets impressions. Now they're not that anymore. But this one is Oh Snap Friends. It is the companion set to Oh Snap, but I love all these sizes and they're perfect. So here's what I've done. I've loaded those two up on my block. You could do this with your Misty, but I'm gonna do this kind of quick, so I don't really think I need the Misty for it. And I'm just gonna stamp several on here and st several on here and then cut them out by hand. We do have an SVG file and it's free. You can use that SVG file. Today I'm just being a little lazy. I don't feel like turning anything on. And what's wrong with some old school stamping, right? So let's do it. Now back to our album, I want to decide if I want to put one of these on the front. I kind of think this would be cute. Some of these words that says snapshots, good times. Look how they're in different directions. I like that too. Journey, live every day. Let's see what we might, oh, our story would be cute on the front. 
um, Bliss, Happy Together, Good Times, Favorite Memories. You just need to get these where you can see them all so you can decide where to put them. My granddaughter was here this weekend and she played Memory. This reminds me of that. <laughs> okay, let's see. I want to show you guys something. I'm really liking fussy cutting with these guys. I know we're not supposed to, but let me show you this. Look how long this blade is. Look how long I can cut before I have to open it again. And again, I know I'm not supposed to cut fussy cutting with these serrated edge scissors, but do you see how far I can go before I have to open it up and start over? And it's not the best result. I had to open it there. Not my best results ever, but I gotta be honest, I'm not hating this. I did that flower in like two scissor openings. I don't know, you might see me doing that a lot. We'll see. All right, so what if we put flowers here, our story? I might want that to show, actually be on top. I think that's cuter. And I may even tie a bow in that. What? Maybe we should do that. Let's poke a hole. Is this an opportunity for me to use an eyelet? I think it might be. Shall we do it? Let's do it. All right, so I'm going to need to poke a bigger hole. I did the smaller one to start with, but I'm going to need the 3 16th because I'm going to use the larger um, little eyelet. I love this little star. I have it in this color and I have it in gold. I kind of wish I had it in black, but look, that's cute, isn't it? So we'll use that. And I think I already have this set up for the 316th, I do. So I will load this guy in here. If you want a video on how to do this, I just filmed a video on this. We'll make sure to link it below. I'm just gonna squish that into place. Look at that, that's super cute, the little star in there, I like that. So then that will live here. And then I may not need a ribbon. I think I'll put a little something there. I looked at doing some black, but I, I mean some green, but I think I've got enough color going on. I'm gonna tie a bow with this black, and I might even do a double bow. Let me give myself some extra here and see if I wanna do that. One good thing about these eyelets is they're easy to thread, especially the larger one, super easy to thread. All right, a bow trick with do and twine. Don't tighten it. See how I've got it started? Do not tighten it until you get everything where you want it. So pull your loops and everything like you want them to go before you squeeze that center and you'll get a better bow that way. So I'm gonna squeeze it now. And I really just want this to be kind of a spidery bow. I know not everybody loves spiders, but I think that'll be cute there like that, just kind of messy. All right, let's glue these guys down. And I think I'll put him up on a little bit of foam right there. I like that on the front, that's cute. All right, let's go inside. Now I'm not gonna do that kind of work throughout. I'm not gonna put eyelets on everything, but I think these might be cute like this, like maybe even finding See, look, snapshot on this because of how that looks or finding other places where there's like big camera. Look at that snapshot, that's cute. I'm just gonna run through and glue these guys down. Also, look, I'm doing it like in an L shape and I'm gonna glue it like this so I still can slide a picture under here whenever I get one ready, right? I, again, I was thinking about putting like a circle picture here so it shouldn't be in the way, but just in case. You can even do this number, just the glue on either end and then place it in like this and maybe give it a little bit of a pinch. You know how we do that whenever we're gluing pockets down so we can easily slide under and now you still have room to put a photo under there. Love that. Because I can see some of the back of the page here, which is not the end of the world, I'm gonna add this up here to kind of distract from that. I'm not gonna stress about it too awful much. Y'all know me in that, but isn't that cute, that? And then I might even come in with, maybe not that one because it's the same color. Let's do this one, maybe put it here or even here so it kind of overlaps. That's kind of cute, just a little extra something. Also, has anybody been able to see the word good times and not seen the theme song from good times? Cause it's been in my head ever since I, t ever since I stamped it. All right, so I used all of them but one. I'm gonna run through and see if I can find a spot for it. That's it. That's where I'm stopping until we put in photos. And I think that's a pretty good bit. What a neat little gift. Look how nice and thick this is. And it doesn't even have its photos yet, but I think there's plenty of room for them. So if we open it up, Remember, this one opens, here's your center piece. These two pieces then open out like so. Then they continue out again. And this guy continues out again like so. And then don't forget, this guy continues out. So lots and lots of space, lots of places for things to go. Love how this one turned out. There's your six by six folio. So now I've given you two different folio sizes. Let me know if you'd like to use another size. Now, I will tell you, I had one in mind to do an 8x8, eight eight, but an 8x8 eight eight will not be a paper saver. We It will be one that we have to, like this one uses three pieces. You know, the other one uses three pieces. We'll probably have to dig into more and have some more scrap, but I don't mind that. If you want to see an 8x8, eight eight, let me know, and we'll be happy to do it. Or if you have another folio idea in mind, 
let me know. Here you go, guys. Another one. Don't forget to subscribe. Help me reach that big old goal. Also, be sure, I want to say this real quick, be sure you sign up for our email list. There have been a lot of schedule changes, and we're trying to make sure we send you an email anytime a video goes up because I don't want you to miss anything. So I'm going to put a link in the description for you to be able to sign up for our email link. Make sure you do that. We also send out emails when we have anything special going on, and I just don't want you to miss out. So there you go, guys. Thanks so much for being here today, and until next time, bye now.